most of the time, and even when our circumstances are grim, we are generally able to see the bright side. At the other extreme, we may be permanently melancholy, despite having no direct or situational reason to feel happy. Both personality characteristics spring from the unconscious, without any deliberate effort or conscious thought on our part. Then Jung goes one step further, suggests that within our unconscious is another even deeper level. At this depth, there exists an accumulation of inherited unconscious thought processes that he calls archetypes, made up of experiences, figures, and images. These exist in the unconscious of all of us, simply because we are human. In his theory of archetypes, he refers to inward themes and images which contain figures on our own These images have universal meanings and create symbolic structures that we understand the world and that is For example, he says that these can be discovered from the Yeah, that background in mind, we refer to the game as good as 
He wants to know what his dream means. He goes to the gypsy woman because he's heard that he's been in before. She tells him that to find the treasure, he must take his dream literally to the gypsy woman. To me, this is a clear indication that the novelist is all about following the alchemical nature. The metaphor of Gutierrez's dream is perfect. If he wants to discover his treasure, he must follow the ways of alchemy which originated in Egypt where he was born. Once we know this to be a fact in the story, the message of the dream is to Our treasure can be found by following the alchemical nature. The other goal of the ancient alchemist was always ultimately to discover the highest levels of all being, materially and spiritually. In Santiago's dream, this is summarized by the treasure. As we read the story, we see how on his journey to discover his treasure, Santiago passes through various stages of transformation of his own soul to reach the point of true empowerment, to unearth the treasure. These, as we shall see further on in this book, are the two inseparable parts of the alchemy. However, Santiago does not want to hear about going to Egypt to find his treasure at the pyramids. He decides never again to believe the dream. It's unclear in the story whether Santiago is reluctant to follow the process of transformation because, like all of us by nature, he wants to avoid the hard work that would entail. Or because he thinks there must be an easier way to get rid of without having to leave what he knows away from the same. Either way, Santiago's initial reaction to the dream is not the one as well. In the story, it's very clear that the treasure is buried in the shell. The root has collapsed, and a sycamore tree is growing up through the room. This aptly describes the lowly value most of us place on our dreams and by implication in our unconscious. It is as if we have abandoned our souls. We no longer respect the inner things of our hearts and instead throw our lives with empty distraction for the rest of the time and never take them forward. The net result is often a feeling of dissatisfaction and a loss of energy in the world. Our souls are the home of our dreams and the root of our real desires, although often these dreams and desires are so deeply buried that we no longer are in the world. But we, like Santiago, by the fact that we may be missing out on the truth of this It is a truism that any transformation to the within the self-awareness and the deliverance of self-determination to change. We're in danger of stumbling through life on the earth, not knowing how it will unfold. The day that the chance for each of you to roll with the dice and have no control over what we have. We are nearly the victims of strength. Oh, what? We may believe our life is dictated by some sort of We can create our own destiny. We are not passive passengers on the ship of life. We take a wherever the wind blows without any determination over the destination. We can please the wheel and steer it to where we will flow. We can become the masters of our fate, the captains of our soul. The outcome may not always be what we initially hoped for, but it is still be beautiful. However, for your consideration. So, how do you know when you are following your true destiny? You know you are on the right path when you make a conscious decision to pursue your dreams and your life is full of enthusiasm and passion. You will experience a sense of awe, wonder, and potential about living in the daily existence. You will know there is a loving purpose in your life and you are free to choose your life. You are following your bliss and your dreams are coming into practice and your life is full of vision. If only it was that easy to hear you say, then you would. It's not easy. If it were, then everyone would be doing it. Clearly, they are I can guarantee that it will be all I can also escape from my own hard work.
Life signal is nearby. To see if Santiago is ready, he asked Santiago to find life in the desert using his own language. The alchemist needs to know that the system will be able to be and he will take him as a Santiago passes the test for watching his forces go down. There are motion sensors and artillery everywhere. I called you all to lead me here. I am where I belong. Saving your people will not bring you peace. Only make the burden you carry worse. And now you seek to defy the con maker herself. It is your people's time now to give penance, just as it was mine. Hear me, Slayer. When his heart is laid to rest, then his soul will be at peace. And so will mine. And his new found love with Now he decides, while well, the alchemist is offering to help, is the time to seize the day. The question is, what does Santiago gain from his time with the alchemist? As the alchemist leads Santiago on his journey across the desert, he takes the opportunity not only to remind Santiago what he already knows about alchemy, but also to help him listen to the most important voice in his life, his heart. The lesson he wants Santiago to remember most is that he can never escape from his heart. So his best advice is to listen to him. The ultimate goal of the apprentice alchemist is a unity of human and eventually learn to accept it for the way it is, sometimes afraid of pain, occasionally complaining, but never silent. The alchemist tells him, eventually, is one of the most significant experience. And his voice says the alchemist, we can't do this in the room, we can't just bring you up, push beyond any of what we have. Santiago learns to let his voice the voice, and then speak back to it in his back to the of the alchemist, he tells his heart not to be afraid, because God and eternity are at this point, Santiago's heart confesses to know all of her dreams and treasure and agrees with Santiago that he is on the right path. The alchemist finally nods. He had been waiting for Santiago to reach this place where he was, where he had to find the fall of the world, before he reached the street. When most people give up, Santiago's heart is in the right In this final story, the alchemist represents the fall of the radio and the world. Earlier in the story, a Arabian connection had been mentioned for the English when he first met Santiago. A friend who had been on an archaeological difficulty, 
essentially 200 years old and this is Europe, so that is all undiscovered that is known. You can infer the alchemist and story is represented in this incredible tree. The extraction point has been identified. I will mark its location on your HUD. Is as much about the process as it is about finding the treasure. We also have the way short. to the encouragement given by the parachuting structures, they order you to jump out of the plane, and it is somebody's thing. It is this way that kind they are to us, and they can be cut and leave, or they might be able to do it. That's what happens all the time. I suggest it may even be found in the most positive form of In other words, it is the encouragement to place that point of worst fear, and not let them stop us from going forward. The character of the alchemist and others to part of love and draw from this encouraging determination to carry on whatever else is going on. This is what the ancient alchemists have to do together and the need for it to be into ancient alchemy, I am convinced that this is possibly the most important event in reaching our real treasure. We will need the alchemy to be important for the alchemy to be in other countries. When we do get the alchemy to be able to do this, we will need the alchemy to be able to do this. The alchemist in place will be aware of the alchemy to be able to do this. In my country, we serve how I found the alchemist and the constant meeting with the alchemy. I was grateful for the treasure I had discovered through my life as we read previous chapters and we 
really hard in everywhere else. Good. Spiritually, emotionally, and practically, which is also a bit
my right early. I was waiting outside the interview room as I watched a stream. You can now find the remaining hell priests by activating your celestial locator. The second hell priest is located in the northern region of Earth. I will calibrate the portal now. Coming and the hub has several areas locked off due to power constraints. Once power has been restored, you will be able to access the entire ship. Now, I hope you're starting to see why it's a good idea to be a long-term investor in the stock market. Hey, Jack, you want to come in? Yeah, sure. Let's get some coffee. Establishing power to core and supplementary systems. to your equipment launcher has been completed. Once fired, the bomb will douse nearby enemies in freezing gases. You'll have to manually toggle the launcher to fire either ice bombs or frag grenades. Freedom fact number five is the air markets have happened every three to five years. Now, I hope you're starting to see why it's a good idea to be a long term <coughs> in the stock market and not really a short term trader. And I hope it's now equally obvious that you don't need to live in the fear of corrections. Just to recap for a moment, you know that corrections happen. Not that anybody can predict when they're going to happen, but they usually happen about once a year and they rebound quickly usually within 60 days, and they usually max out on an average of 14.2% on average, resuming that traditional trajectory once again after doing that towards growth. When you understand this, any fear you once felt should turn into power. Believe me, these facts are like a revelation. Once I understood that all my concerns about corrections just melted away. But what about the big ones? <laughs> what about those bear markets everybody's so terrified of? Actually, no. You don't need to be terrified of them either. Here again, we need to understand a few key facts so we can act on the basis of knowledge and not just media hype, no fears, or emotions. The first fact you need to know is that there were 34 bear markets in 115 years between the year 1900 and 2015. Again, 34 bear markets. That's where the market drops 20% or more in those 115 years between 1900 and 2015. 
on average then, it happened nearly every once every three years. More recently though, bear markets have occurred less often. In the 70 years since 1946, there have only been 14 bear markets, and that's a rate of one bear market every five years. So depending on when we start counting, it's not the same bear markets that historically happened in
is somewhere in this facility. I cannot pinpoint his exact location at this time. Gates, the richest 
Yeah. 